Tuesday Floss Tube. Hello crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? My name is Caroline. Welcome back. Daily Crafty Chat. Today is Tuesday, February the 16th and I am recording here in London, Ontario, Canada. This is a channel mostly about cross stitch with some knitting and some sewing and all the crafty things. Crafty chit chat. I'm going to start with the giveaways today. I had two giveaways uh, queued up because I didn't I didn't choose the winner last week of the one before so I have two charts to give away today and I picked the winners. So the first chart that I had from a couple of weeks ago was an Ursula Michaels imaginating chart. Let's go green. And the comment chosen was Heather Woolley. So congratulations, Heather. This chart is for you. The second chart that I had for giveaway was a Lizzie Kate snippet. And uh, that's this cutie right here. Just married. And the winner of this chart, I actually know this winner. This was Jessica Jane. Jessica Jane, my friend, she is a fellow Ontario crafter. Jessica, I'm pleased to be able to send this to you. I'm pretty sure I have your address, but if you could email it to me again, caroline at evertote.com, then I will be able to pop this in the mail for you. I've mentioned Jessica before a few times, mostly on the Fiber Friends channel, because I met Jessica as a knitter and I think Jessica might be a brand new cross stitcher, perhaps thanks to a little bit of enabling. So Jessica, I think this is a perfect chart for you. I believe your sister got married last year. Did she get married last year? I can't quite remember, but I do remember seeing um, pictures on your Instagram feed. So I hope you enjoy the chart. Okay, I have a new giveaway up for today. You can find these giveaways over on the Facebook group Friday off the grid and you're more than welcome to join us over there. I have a what I think is an appropriate chart for today. There has been some weather happening. Uh, uh, we received a massive amount of well I mean massive massive is relative. We received maybe about a foot of snow here in London last night and uh, you know, we've been, we've kind of digging, digging out from that this morning that the school buses were canceled. Uh, not that affects us anyways. Nicholas is still doing virtual school, but, uh, I know there's been some, some wet, some unexpected and weather that you're not used to down in, uh, the Southern States down in Texas. I've heard that, um, you are, you are experiencing quite severe for your area, uh, cold and snow. And uh, so I hope everybody's okay. I hope everybody's safe and uh, staying warm. And, um, you know, it's uh, when it's not weather that you're used to, I think that can be very challenging. So wishing, wishing everyone the best. So I chose a chart today. Everyone loves a snowman. Or a snow person. So this is a Myrtle Grace uh, the motifs, Myrtle Grace motifs, and uh, this is from 2011, and it's in the meadow with Franklin and Pierce. I have a feeling that I've given away this chart before because this chart looks familiar. I think I had a couple of copies of it. I might even have a third copy of it in my in my stack. It's such a sweet design. So in the meadow with Franklin and Pierce. The fabric called for is a Weeks Dye Work 30 count blue jeans. And it's just a small, um, this, it has, it calls for Weeks Dye Work threads. There is, there are DMC conversions beside. And, um, you know, I think that would look pretty cute on any sort of blue fabric that you might have super cute. Okay, so again, you'll find the photo for this giveaway over on the Facebook group Friday Off The Grid. Just leave me a comment over there and I'll pick a winner next Monday. So, 
yeah it's coffee break time here for me taking a break from my work of the day and uh, I thought I might try to do a bit of knitting but I, I'm not sure I I'm not a very good knitter when I am not looking at my knitting and so sometimes I feel a little self-conscious when I'm sitting here talking to you and I'm looking down in my lap knitting the whole time so it feels a little little funny but I wanted to show you my knitting just to remind you that this is a gift for my friend Miss Patty who most of you have met by now and uh, this was yarn that was that she had purchased for herself when she was hoping to learn how to knit and it just didn't work out so she ended up passing all of her knitting stash her yarn stash to me and so I decided that I would make her something special with some of the really beautiful yarn that she had um, given to me so oh and also I am yes I'm showing it and I'm talking about it it is she knows that I am making her something she doesn't know what it is and I have asked her to not watch the channel um, for a little while until this is done and I think you'll see by my progress that I'm going to be done maybe another let's say conservatively two weeks another two weeks and that's taking my time this has been such a fast knit I started this on Super Bowl Sunday and I know it's all kind of curled up on the on the needles but that's it kind of stretched out there so I'm making a cowl and uh, it is a two by two broken rib pattern so I'm just I just kind of made it up it's very simple did a twisted German cast on I knit one round plain knit stitch and then I did two rounds of a rib uh, two knits two purls for two two rows and then I did two rows of plain knit stitch and that's why it's called a broken rib because you're breaking up the the ribbing and that's what creates that texture so I'm really really happy with how it's turning out the yarn is beautiful and just last night so this is the end of the first ball and so what I'm doing is I caked up the second ball and I have added that in so now I'm alternating the end of the first ball I'm, I'm alternating in the new skein of yarn so that um, it'll blend the the colors will blend so let's see if I can get that color to show up there we go I'm hoping that when I move into my new space, I'll be able to set up a better area that will have proper lighting and maybe time to invest in some ring lighting or something like that. I don't know. We'll see, but I'll try to, I really would like to try and fix my lighting problem. At the moment, I'm in a very small room that has a skylight and a huge window right beside me. And I have, you know, unnatural lighting on as well because it is so gray outside so it's um it's tricky to get the colors right however miss patty's cowl is well underway and it feels really really good i'm so i i can't wait to give it to her so we have been in uh i've chatted with her a couple of times so we um she knows that i'm making her something and uh that i will when i'm done uh, I have asked if I may come over and uh, deliver it to her, do a porch drop off. So hopefully within, within the next two weeks, it'll be done and gifted. And really, I would really like her to have it before the end of winter so that she can maybe wear it a couple of times. So that's my cowl. The other thing that I only worked on a little bit was the, was my Firlanda HKVH uh, sampler and I just took a quick little video of the little motif to the I moved to the right the new motif that I started I just started it last night and it's it's a little more than half done it's just a small motif um, but I wanted to leave it on the floor frame because I would like to I'd like to have I don't have a lot of time today and I really want to try and finish that motif tonight or tomorrow morning with my coffee so I've left it on the frame and I just took a little video of it so that I could 
so that I could prove <laughs> that I had worked on it and made a little bit of progress. So I'll just pop that little video clip in right here. Mm. So, <sighs> plants this weekend, you may recall that when I started off the year, I said, I don't want to make any plans. I don't want to make any plans that I feel if I break them, I will feel guilty. <laughs> 2021 was just going to be the year that I want to have fun with my crafting, my personal crafting. I just want to have fun with it. So this weekend, it was Valentine's Day weekend, and I'm not really a huge other than Christmas and winter stitching. I'm not really a very seasonal or holiday stitcher, which I think was clear when I, I discussed my Glendon Place Witch's Wheel a couple weeks ago that I that I mailed on to my friend Kristen and uh, so that someone would love it and stitch it because I just I had a very I have very I had very specific thoughts in mind for certain projects that I wanted to make. I really wanted to have them for my music studio, for my students to enjoy, you know, a, a different project when they would come in for their lessons. But I, I don't know, we never really decorate the house for anything other than Christmas time and winter. So I find I found myself not really working on it more than one day a year. And in fact, last year, I don't think I even worked on it at all. So I'm so glad that it's gone to someone who will stitch it and love it because, you know, it's really a cool piece. But so I don't have, I didn't have anything for Valentine's Day, but I thought, you know, I really kind of feel like stitching something heart like Valentine y, but, you know, not, I don't know. I, I didn't really know, but I always know that I like uh, Jacob's Designs, Modern Folk Embroidery. I have been winding purple floss for the last week, so I've been looking at this gorgeous floss, and so I poked around in Jacob's site. He has a, a whole section in his shop, so Jacob is modern, in case I didn't say that already, modern folk embroidery. And if you haven't watched it yet, Jacob's latest video is wonderful. I highly recommend if you haven't checked it out yet. It's it's just it was such a great video. And um, the he's got two freebie charts out right now. One of them a black a very special Black Lives Matter pin cushion that he has he's charted into this small beautiful design and um, you know with the encouragement that we will donate to uh, a respective charity of, of of our choice for you know the 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 absolute pleasure of being able to download his designs and you know make make a small difference a bit of a bit of craft of craftivism if you will and uh, just a, a fantastically well-spoken video and so I, I also wanted to support Jacob's shop because I just I think he's a great he's just a great person and so I thought let's check out what we can purchase from from Jacob as well as you know enjoy his free PDFs and so I found a chart in his, there's a section called Romantic Patterns. And so they are, I mean, you could just spend a whole hour looking at all of his designs. They are all so beautiful. So the one that I found was called, oop, I've got a bit of, that's a bit of the yarn fluff in my hair. Okay, so the pattern was called Distal Fink Heart, a good luck charm PDF pattern. And I'm going to insert a photo of that chart right here. Isn't it beautiful? It's just so pretty and I love the birds. I love stitching borders. I love geometric, you know, repetitive repetitive um, motifs that you can just sort of go on autopilot and stitch. It's, it's such a pleasure. You know, you can even stitch these, those kinds of designs when you're a little bit fatigued at the end of the day. So I found some 32 count dirty linen in my stash 
and it was plenty big enough. In fact, I even had a little extra and I started it. And not only did I start it, but I did a fair bit. Look at that. I finished the entire center motif and I completed the first row of the border. And those of you who know the, the dirty linen colorway, you'll know that in real life, it's a lot warmer than um, the camera's picking up. It looks quite cool, the, the color of this fabric. It's quite warm. And the threads, that's pretty close. That is pretty close to the actual thread color. They're gorgeous. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the thread later on, but um, this design is, it's just so fun to stitch. And so I plan on changing the colors as I go with the, working with the borders, uh, working my way out. And I just love it. I love it so much. Those birds, they're so beautiful. It really, I, I couldn't put it down. I couldn't put it down. I know I had said I was going to see no plans, right? And as soon as I make those plans, I, I want to throw them out the window and do something else. So I, I should just stop making plans. <laughs> oh, so um, my ink circles, damask square. I, I, I did complete almost like minus I'm, I'm shy, like five or six stitches finishing the center because I finished my thread and then immediately started you know making plans to do this and and switched over so i will get back to my ink circles but i i was just so completely shiny nickeled by this chart that i had to i had to start it i had to start it so the frame that i have this on is a it's a k's craft works no sorry i get that mixed up my floor frame that i use is a hearthside craft works um, and it's a Mark II floor frame. If you want more information on the one that I really like that I use all the time, if you check out episode 55, my floss tube episode 55, I did a little video where I actually show my floor frame. But this, this lap frame, this is a K's Creations frame. I have a few of them. I really like them. It's a scroll rod system. Um, they don't know who I am. So uh, this is, uh, I think, a pretty honest review. I have used these for years and they hold up really well. I am using, uh, I often interchange the things that I have and make them work together. So I will often use my Hearthside Craftworks scroll rods in the K's bars and the other way around as well. One of them has a slightly bigger screw and I actually had John um, use a drill bit and <laughs> widen one of the holes in my Hearthside Craftworks floor frame so that it would hold the Case Creations scroll rods because it's slightly bigger. And there are like three, three holes in the side and so I chose one pair of them and made them a little bit bigger. But the other thing that's a little different that's a different product are these. This is something called a handy clamp. And so instead of sewing your fabric to the scroll rod, you clamp it on. It does tend to leave a crease in the fabric because I do tend to, to crank the fabric quite tightly. Uh, so I just put a strip of quilt batting in between that's wide enough to cover both ends so you can see here's the one lip of the handy clamp and there's the other lip on the inside and so I want to make sure that the quilt batting is wide enough to cover both of those and then if you use that to roll it up it it helps prevent that line I'll still get a line if I'm not careful or if I leave my fabric on the frame for too long and I don't loosen it but it usually irons out so I'm not overly fussy about it and these are I found these, I bought these from a friend's estate auction. Uh, I think they're just called extender or tension, tension rods, maybe just tension rods. All it is, is they, you can, you can twist these up and they can increase the tension of your, on your fabric even more. Um, I never use, you can also purchase side 
clips that look like little suspender clips and you can somehow attach them. I know there are Etsy sellers who make them. Maybe if somebody has purchased those before, if you can recommend a good place to find them, uh, leave me a comment in the drop down, in the comments below, and maybe I'll try to pin your comment to the top because I've never used them, but I do know that if people who, who have the scroll rod system aren't happy with the tension, apparently if you get these little clips, you can clip it to the side of your fabric and it will hold the tension of your fabric this way as well to make you know an even better uh, surface area for stitching on so um, yeah I Jacob has mentioned that he's planning on doing a hem stitch tutorial I don't think he's done that yet but I love the look of that hem stitch finishing and so I think what I'd love to do is I want this to be the first thing that I stitch for my new workspace and so I would love to finish it with the finishing technique that Jacob uses which is the hem stitch and then pop it in a frame and be able to hang it in the new workspace so I'm kind of excited about that so other than that um that's it. That's it for new crafty stuff. Uh, if you're joining me with the uh, modern, the other modern folk embroidery um, stitch along 2021, so many people are stitching that gorgeous piece. I'm planning on starting mine a couple months late. I'm going to start mine on March 1st, which is also when I'm going to celebrate the one and only high tea that I'm going to do this year. So if you'd like to join me and celebrate high tea start, special new start from your stash, something that you've been saving that you can't wait to start, March 1st. March 1st is the day and I will put together um, some kind of, of giveaway to celebrate the day as well. I also still have a giveaway open from the last high tea video. So if you if you poke around in the in the channel a little bit and search for high tea and you find the very last one that I did, the giveaway on that, and that might have even been back when I was still at the cottage last year. I think that's when it was. October is is ringing a bell. So um, there is, I have a lot, a beautiful chart, the Quoth the Raven chart from Lila Studios. I still have that available for giveaway and I'm going to choose the winner on March 1st for, for high tea. So I'll be choosing the winner from the, from the last high tea video. It's been a long time, but it's still not too late to, to enter. You just have to go and find which one it is. So we'll make it a little treasure hunt. I won't make it too easy. And uh, so March 1st, I'll be starting my Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along, 2021 Stitch Along. And that's, yeah, that's it for personal crafting. Okay, so I just have um, a couple of things to talk about for the shop here at the end of the podcast. So if you are not interested in any of that, if you'd rather say goodbye, you're just here for Crafty Chat, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, well, I won't be back tomorrow, actually. Tomorrow is going to be the very last video that I have stored up in store for you from Dorothy of Historische Stickmuster. The very last video that I have saved. And I, please, if you haven't watched the other three, they're so enjoyable. Dorothy is a fountain of historical knowledge and it's just fun it's just fun to listen to her talk about her samplers I'm hoping that I can maybe convince her to record a few more little tidbits for us because I really enjoy listening to her speak uh, I have a few uh, things to do tomorrow in relation to my new space I am actually we are booked in to go and meet the flooring person tomorrow and discuss some options for uh, the the flooring is being being replaced and so um, that's tomorrow morning and I'm also going to pick up some more floss tomorrow so tomorrow will be a video from Dorothy but I'll be back on Wednesday with the funny crafting stories that I've been promising for a little while now so we're gonna do that on Wednesday so at the end of the video here I'm just gonna quickly tell you a little bit about uh, the new floss, the new Leo and Roxy floss, the set of purples 
I'm picking up the two final colors of the set of five. I'm picking those up tomorrow. I've seen a sneak peek of one of them and it's gorgeous, gorgeous. And so they are two, there are two darker shades that are going to be added to the original set of three that I've already shared with you. One of them I would describe as a really super rich purple with um, lighter reddish purple tones in it. I have only seen it wet. I haven't seen it dry yet, but it's going to be gorgeous. And the last color is, a, is going to be a super, super, super dark black purple. And so there's, this is going to be another set of five and it's going to be the first shop update is going to be Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that is when I'm going to, I'm just, just going to load in the set of five. Um, and then the next shop update that I do with the floss next week, I will offer those colors as well in individual quantities as well. So if you purchase, uh, in the first shop update, but you know you want more of individual colors, uh, send me an email once you've placed the second order so that I rem so that I know to combine your shipping for you. Also, if you have a bag order in the queued up in the shop at the moment, and you know that you want to order the purples, just send me an email, and then I'll make sure that uh, that I can combine those orders as well. Okay, that's it. So Thursday this Thursday, the 18th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And in at the end of Thursday's video, which I'll make sure is up in the afternoon so that you can see the colors, um, I will show you the last two colors of the set of five. And that's it. I think that's it. John just got home a few minutes ago. I can hear him downstairs. And uh, I need to time is it it's quarter to three already this afternoon I have to teach my flute student in a couple of hours so I'm gonna go and sort out what is going to happen for dinner tonight and then do a little bit more work teach my student and then hopefully get to sit down with a little bit more stitching this evening maybe some knitting too okay so that's it for me today again you can look forward to a short video from Dorothy tomorrow, and I will see you again on Wednesday. Wednesday's video is probably going to be rather lengthy because I am going to try to get through all of the crafting stories that are queued up in my email. So be prepared. Bring a warm drink, bring your cozy, co cozy comfy blankie and your stitching, and get ready to settle in and let me read to you there's some funny stories in there. So have a great couple of days and I'll see you again on Wednesday. Happy stitching everybody.